Dr. Brassett, I keep it as well. Revealing the devastating scope here. The aftermath of this catastrophic tornado outbreak. At least 34 reported tornadoes tearing through at least eight states. He is either up or two, right lane. 80 of them in Kentucky alone. And the governor tonight warning that number could go far higher. Late today here, the governor describing the historic nature of this disaster. This is Kentucky's most devastating tornado event in our history. We've lost far too many of our brothers and sisters. The damage is devastating. Entire blocks, more than one block, with nothing standing. But to the people of America, there is no lens big enough to show you the extent of the damage here in Graves County or in Kentucky. Here in Mayfield, Kentucky, their downtown devastated, taking a direct hit. Large buildings gutted. The First Presbyterian Church destroyed. The courthouse, the clock tower, continue on I-40. Neighborhoods leveled. Street after street, we see it. The homes wiped away. Rooftops gone. The sides of homes torn off. Bedrooms, living rooms exposed. The second floor of this home open to the sky. This was the candle factory where dozens of workers on the overnight shift were killed. Some 110 workers inside with a tornado hit. They were working into the night, hoping to fulfill orders in time for Christmas. <laughs>
Jake non-stop, even as he has lost members of his own family. What he confirmed to me just before we came on tonight. Governor, thanks for joining us. I heard you say late today that this could very well be the worst tornado event in your state's history. Uh, it's the worst tornado event uh, 200 miles just in Kentucky. Uh, pure devastation. This town is gone. Uh, Bells and Springs, where my dad's from, just up the road, half of it is gone. Um, more lives lost, uh, more people displaced. Uh, it, it's devastating. What does the state need tonight from this country and from the federal government? Okay, prayers. Uh, we are still hoping for miracles. Every person we find or locate, we're just getting cell service back up in some places. So we are finding people. Every single moment is is incredible. Uh, we need support. Uh, we need uh, more financial support for others to the Red Cross or the Team, uh, Team Western Kentucky Relief Fund that we have uh, set up. No need commitment because a lot of people want help today. This is going to take years to rebuild when you look at what's around us. Whatever you say there, that you just found someone because I knew you had said it would be a miracle at this point. We keep locating people. Uh, well, we have located. Some people we believe from the candle factory, the, the owner thinks that it might not be as bad, but we are waiting uh, for full confirmation of that. Yeah, that death toll is lower there than we think. Um, that's what we've been praying for the whole time. We're for that. So they weren't found in the rubble, but they were located that's elsewhere, right. which was very encouraging. So now elsewhere, though, across the state, we are finding bodies. Uh, we have cadaver dogs now, and towns that are supposed to have cadaver dogs. You mentioned your father's hometown got destroyed. Please interrupt now, too. Left lane. Uh, I've lost uh, two first cousins to be with our county, a town mayor of 140 that have 10 dead. Uh, no, still standing in the town. My dad's hometown. I spent eight hours trying to get my, my cousin on the line. Thank God she's there. I saw her yesterday. Uh, gave her a copy, and, and she's uh, engaged in, in, in the disaster uh, recovery there. I see your face. I'm sorry for your loss, your family's loss, and for this whole state. And what you're going through tonight. We feel America's love. I mean, we, we, we truly have gotten unprecedented support. We have a long way to dig out. Uh, we're tough people, but we're going to have to breathe together before we can rebuild together. Thank you. Our thanks to the governor, Governor Bashir, joining us just before we came on the air tonight, right here in Mayfield, Kentucky. Of course, Kentucky isn't the only state facing immeasurable loss. The Amazon warehouse, of course, in Edwardsville, Illinois. Tonight, at least six workers there are dead when an EF3 tornado struck there with winds up to 155 miles an hour during a shift change on Friday night. The company now identifying the workers who were lost. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano from Illinois tonight. Tonight, the families of the Amazon workers killed when a tornado poured through this Illinois facility in shock. I walked out of that building and then it told me my dad was gone. I dropped to my knees and I screamed at the sky at the top of my lungs. Today, authorities identifying the six confirmed dead after an EF3 twister zeroed in on this warehouse Friday night in Edwardsville, just outside St. Louis. Winds up to 155 miles per hour, ripping the roof off the warehouse and collapsing giant concrete walls around the workers inside. Among the victims, Justice's father, Larry Vernon. They said, no. My dad, no, my dad's gonna move. They said, I mean, my dad, he can't leave. Her dad among the many drivers returning to the facility after finishing their routes right when the tornado struck. The massive building, less than two years old, now left with a gaping hole the size of a football field. Neighbors saying the destruction left this debris across multiple properties. Tonight, representatives from Amazon are on the scene assessing the damage. It's a devastating loss, you know, and now we have to turn our attention to really taking care of, of the survivors and the family members, our employees, you know, getting people uh, back up on their feet. David, there are two shelter-in-place rooms inside this facility. Employees are told to go to when the alarms go off. And while six people did die, the majority of the workers survived because they went to those rooms and they had a plan. David? All right, Rob Marciano with us tonight as well. Rob, thank you. And of course, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where another tornado struck, killing at least 12 people. We take note tonight that the hospitals there were already struggling because of COVID. ABC's Victor Akenda was there tonight. Tonight, in the hard-hit city of Bowling Green, new tornado victims still arriving at the hospital. It had to be pretty chaotic here. Um, it was. I, I came on at 6 o'clock yesterday morning, some hours afterwards, and the complete department was every single bed was full. Emergency room physician Dr. Grant Fraser describing how people with gruesome injuries were transported with no power or a way to call 911. Multiple people came in my pickup truck, pulled up to the ambulance bay, um, and uh, ended up getting hauled out by staff. They showed up and they were pounding on the door over there. Hospitals across Western Kentucky already stretched with COVID patients, treating scores of victims crushed under shredded homes and buildings. It was just crushing injuries from limbs to chest to brain uh, and everything in between. If you can think of that part of the body, you can tell you one patient who had crushing injuries that you're Community members lining up at blood drives, eager to help any way they can. It just shows how strong the community is and how much people are wanting and willing to help. People in this community were jumping in to help even before the weather had cleared, and they haven't stopped. The turnout was so large in today's blood drive, there was another one planned for tomorrow. David, sorry, right, Victor Kendo tonight. Victor, thank you. And on this Sunday, so many here are turning to their fate to get through. We mentioned that historic organ here over my shoulder now completely exposed, and still today, they found a way to gather. Lindsay Davis is right here with me in Kentucky. In the midst of the rubble, they gather members of the Mayfield, Kentucky community, worshiping together for some service. This is a necessary gathering. Many of those present without power, some even displacing their homes altogether. The full magnitude of the devastation is hard to comprehend. Multiple churches in 
the area destroyed. Many so ravaged by the storm, the heavens are now visible from the sanctuary. Here I see what remains of First Presbyterian Church, and yet I see what matters most. The faithful that have gathered here with us on the parking lot this morning. Dr. Milton West is pastor of First Christian Church, the brick building that stood for more than 100 years, knocked down in a matter of minutes. I was here yesterday morning about 6 o'clock. What's your first reaction? I am stunned by, by the loss of this building. In the midst of all the loss, the foundation remains. It's very emotional, but it was very important to come today to have service because we need each other. David, at least one thing that remains intact for many of the people we spoke to today is their faith. And Dr. West says that he is confident that his church, that his community will come back stronger and better. David. Nancy, I know you were moved by this today. We all were. We needed that report tonight. Nancy Davis, our thanks to you. We'll have much more on these tornadoes in just a moment. But when we come back, where they are now warning of a, quote, tidal wave of this new Omicron variant. There is news tonight on the pandemic. The Omicron variant now in at least 25 states here in the U.S. New York's mask mandate going into effect tomorrow for all indoor public places that don't require proof of vaccination. Dr. Anthony Fauci with what he calls sobering news. He says preliminary studies suggest the Omicron variant evades some of the new protections provided by the antibodies and vaccines. However, he says boosters do help restore those protections. And we took note overseas tonight. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson warning that the U.K. now faces a tidal wave of Omicron cases, saying the new variant doubles every two to three days there. We have two passings to know tonight. Author Anne Rice has died. Best known for her best-selling novel, Interview with a Vampire, and a famous Mexican singer has died tonight. All over the world, they are remembering an icon of Mexican music, Vicente Fernandez, considered one of the most important and influential artists in Mexican history. He was 81. Finally, here, there was a sign found in the rubble of his church, and I read here today, be strong and courageous. And that's exactly what they're doing. I'll see you on GMA tomorrow.
in the Zorgathon multiple states, and then in the end, many of them 